Great. So after an amazing session by Ben, uh, which uh, I think uh, we all have thoroughly enjoyed. Next up, I have uh, with me is Uchit Vyas, Associate Director at KPMG. And he will be sharing a presentation on promoting team collaboration with API service design. Like every session, you will have the chat box available to you to drop any of the questions you have for Uchit. And we'll be taking all these questions at the end of the Uchit session. So Uchit, very warm welcome to API Days Live Singapore. Thank you, Dheeraj. Thanks a lot. Over to you. I'm clear with you. Yeah. Yes. OK. So uh, good morning, guys. Uh, this is Uchit here. As Dheeraj mentioned, I'm working with KPMG as associate director. So this presentation is about the API design collaboration between the multiple teams and how do we, uh, I would say, collaborate in a better way or I would say in a faster way to fail. So this is kind of a learning curve uh, I had with a couple of my clients and I understood like, okay, what are the uh, key problems clients are facing and all. So from there, uh, I derived this particular presentation as my learning. So a little bit about uh, myself. So I'm, yeah, technology is at a heart. I do like coming from the DevSecOps and cloud background. So uh, basically, uh, I as a hobby, I write books. I speak in a world, uh, multiple con conferences. I'm working as, I would say, the influential person for my uh, KPMG Asian market also in terms of the DevS uh, DevSecOps and cloud. So next is come to the presentation part, or I would say the problem statement, which like multiple clients are facing regarding the APIs, right? So generally the teams are preparing the contracts very much in a silos so because as its name suggests it's an api contract that means it's a contract between the two parties right but each and every team members or i would say that each teams are creating their own contract and then they're publishing via whatever the medium either they use the smart beer products either they use i would say the pack products or something but they all uh, work maybe in a silos or maybe very little collaboration over there. And generally service API contracts are getting verified. I would say the integration test in SIT and UAT, they are not getting verified or even they are not mean to design, which can be verified in a, I would say in a dev environment, right? So for my experience, it is if you are getting the defects regarding the API contract design related stuff, it is still late if you are getting those particular defects in SIT and UAT environments, because unnecessary, we are uh, wasting our time into troubleshooting those particular design gap issues. And then the uh, blaming part will happen between from one team to another, like, hey, you haven't uh, talked about this particular design uh, things. You haven't talked about the response or request body, which you asked for. So such uh, blames will come uh, at SIT and UAT phases, which eventually will delay the release cycle, right? And sometimes many clients are facing like the environments are not connected. That means one platform is getting deployed in one environment where other platform is getting deployed in another environment where there is no environment connectivity or synchronization is happening, right? So for that, how do we make sure like our design is uh, robust? Our design is ready to fail fast and at least we can troubleshoot in a, in a efficient way in a dev environment or I would say in a design environment itself, right? While designing the contract, right? So what could be the efficient way, or at least how do we avoid this particular, I would say the blames in SIT and UAT by collaborating more and more with the team members. And refill effectively, as I mentioned, it will delay, uh, delay in the release cycles. We'll get more and more production fixes uh, as a CRs. And eventually we'll lose the trust from the customer as well as the higher leadership or a management because we are just uh, creating something, we are troubleshooting it, and then we are creating again or recreating again and publishing it. So it's a waste of manpower bandwidth usage for the troubleshooting, right? So solution approach, uh, the common approach from the multiple solutions I took is like a standardized the templates to design the specs, meaning, Whatever the teams are using the template, it should be across the organization. Let's say, for example, if people are using, uh, I would say, Swagger Hub, it should be across the uh, people are using Swagger Hub across the uh, project or across the organization. The design gap detector process should be there, which is like, okay, if something is not aligned with the uh, other team member service contract or other, uh, I would say, the project service contract, it should detect at the design phase that uh, design gap protector processes should be in place. 
centralized user management and artifact strategy should be there because who can access what what uh, who can change the contracts uh, who cannot at least uh, view the contract or who can at least adopt the contract and edit it and then the integrated version control system even within the design phase of the contract which is very much required uh, as to get the control over the contract and to understand the life cycle of the contract right uh, many uh, clients are using the automated api stubs and test cases so whenever the contract designs are ready the stubs can be generated the test cases can be generated and which can trigger the verification pipelines also right so the last part is end to end api contract mapping when i say this end to end api contract mapping what does it mean is let's for example we have system a b c d right system a uh, owner will be different system b system c and system d owners will be different and hence they will create they will work in a silos in that case system a will uh, define their own contract and the response and everything system b and system c will follow on once the integration will get started right they will do in the development environment system between system a and b system b and c system c and d but they will not talk holistically across all the systems so once this particular platform system a b c d goes on to the uh, sit or uh, uat environment they will face challenges like hey uh, a to b is working fine but b to c is not uh, giving some different response hence a to b is not working fine right so this kind of a scenario uh, to avoid this kind of a scenarios how do we uh, make it like a very strong collaborative way like wherever the contract is getting uh, designed how do we start verifying those particular contracts right so the second last point is also very much important once the contract is getting designed how do we generate the particular uh, api stubs are there like request and response bodies are available readily at the design phase or are there test cases are coming into the testing phases or testers are just getting involved in my design phases as well right and the last part is the pipeline trigger verification which is like okay the people will say hey pipeline that means devops guys will do that and we will just focus on our uh, contract creation but at least if we can involve the devops teams to understand the contracts to understand the how the contract will flow between systems and across the holistic enterprise way right so they should be able to at least create or guide you uh, in terms of the how the pipeline should flow in terms of the verification in terms of the deployment and in terms of i would say the delivery part right and this should actually uh, i would say followed in each and every environment not even in testing environments or even say in the dev environments but it should holistically uh, followed by each and every environment so what i generally high level implementation uh, which i do is like okay there are Uh, on the top of the slide you can see the producer and the down is the consumer right at the start so the producer it's a first step and the consumer is a first step so there are two parties they are coming together they are talking with each other via email via chat via face to face meeting but they are then deriving the particular contract that means we call it a service api contract the agreement between the two parties hey you will send something to me i will respond back something to you that is the agreement now while making this particular agreement it may not necessary that um uh, producer will whatever the consumer is asking the producer will provide in terms of a response so producer may have to go to the other uh, producers to ask for the details and come back to the consumer right so this is like a common uh, producer consumer uh, scenario where the two parties will come together on the same platform they will develop the, or i would say they design the uh, contract they will design the relative test cases for the contract from the producer side from the consumer side and once the contract is ready then it will be pushed to the uh, service api repository which we call as a i would say in a git repository or in a service api specific repository you have so it should be pushed via uh, your producer and consumer teams as a one contract right because as i focusing on the service api contract that means that two parties are aligned between uh, this particular contracts right like what i'm asking and what uh, you guys are sending to me so once the service api contract is available within the service api repository in that case at last service api repository will be the key uh, source of truth for us whether whether the contract has been changed whether who modified the contract or how the contract will be flowed Uh, across the other systems right so from there onwards the 
I would say the orchestration engine. So whatever you use in your CI/CD pipelines or in a dose of lifecycle principles, whatever the pipelines you use or whatever the tools you use, it should pick it up from the service API repository. Either it's a container environment or a non-containerized environment, it doesn't matter over there, right? So orchestration engine. Uh, so there there has to be a like pre-built design jobs available, which can at least understand. Okay, something has been changed in my service API repository. Or some contracts has been added, some contracts has been deleted, or some contracts has been, I would say, modified. So that kind of a logic uh, we may need to maintain somewhere. Or there are other uh, enterprise out of the box tools are available who can help you in that case to manage the, your service API lifecycle. But after that, once the contract is available, so I would say your contract should uh, triggered to the or orchestration engine, and orchestration engine then understand. Okay, this is the contract. From there, I will uh, some other systems I need to talk with, which can give me the I would say API stubs. For that, I can do the testing. So, I understand this is the design phase. So once the design has been ready, I should have at least the API stub available from the producer side as well as the uh, consumer side, against which I can check. Because as of now, I'm trying to do uh, early failure. I'm doing the fail fast strategy. I'm applying over here, which means I'm not going as of now into dev or test phases. I'm still on the design phase, hence I need the stubs to be generated, right, from the, my design patterns. So from those design patterns, once the uh, stubs are getting generated, which is a step number four, then uh, I would say I will start testing or I would start verifying my contracts again, those particular stubs or whatever the design I have created. So multiple, there are multiple ways you go uh, sequentially, you can go uh, parallelly, that's fine uh, in terms of to validate the producer as well as the consumer side changes. So both the teams uh, from their end, they will start doing this particular uh, verification. Once the verification is uh, okay from the both the side, then the contract, I would say the design is okay. There is no design gaps because whatever the uh, in output we are requesting that we are getting from both the ends, producer as well as the consumer side. Right. So this is the uh, key fundamental over here. Like, how do we collaborate much more in here? I'm talking about the producer and consumer here. I'm talking about the DevOps pipelines here. I'm talking about even the testing of, or verifying the contracts also. Right. So whatever the testing tools or verification methods you guys are using or you may be using in the future, uh, we should at least keep in mind that it is a contract. That means there are two parties are involved. In that case, there are two way testing has to be done, right? So once the contract is uh, tested and verified from the design perspective, then it is ready to be deployed in your various environments or whatever the uh, environment terminology you guys may be using. Uh, it can be deployed from the dev and from the from their end. So developer gets st uh, can get start the development of those particular uh, backend coding. But at least once the contract is available uh, in terms of the verified manner whether it's in your particular artifactory or somewhere, uh, you can take it that contract from there and then it can be deployed to the environments where developer can focus on their development work without focusing or without wasting their time in terms of validating the design, right? So uh, that's the main part, like how do we collaborate more at a design phase, not at the SIT innovative phase uh, to ask everyone like, hey, what did you do in terms of this contract? Or hey, what did you done uh, with this contract in terms of a response and error codes and all, right? So to avoid those particular uh, changes at a later stage, we, uh, we can pre uh, prevent those changes or at least the gaps at a design phase, right? So what could be the benefits uh, it can give you? It's like it can detect your API design gaps really early if you focus on the collaboration part at design phase, right? And Failed results that exactly what is causing actually in terms of why there is a gap in your system or why there is a gap in your contract. It can give you the exact output based on the generated stops, right? Here I'm talking about the more automated collaboration because two parties are coming together. They are just forming the contract, talking with each other. And then once the contract has been formed, designed, then they are just pushing into the repository. The rest of the things is getting automated, uh, automatically verified, automatically, I would say, the uh, tested using the stubs, and then it will available to the particular environments. So the developer and the testers can take it forward functionally or I would say in, in terms of the development part, right? 
Here, uh, we are talking about the transparent and automated service contract verification using the stubs and orchestration services. As I mentioned, the auto, uh, automated stub generation, multiple tools are available and orchestration services, whatever is feasible in your environment or in your organization, we can use it. And then the failed testing results are, maybe it can be due to real system error or not because of the uh, flex infrastructure. We can easily understand, right? Because once the contract is available within the environment and you are facing the issues, we can at least understand, okay, this is not a design gap, but this is something else. Maybe the infrastructure integration issues, or I would say that something is going on really bad at the system level, but this is not at least a design gap. So we are sure over there. Right. And the second last point is blameless culture because we exactly know why it is failing. Right. Because we are doing the early detection of the uh, issues and it's easy for troubleshooting as there is a design gap. We can understand easily like why there is a design gap, what is, is failing, whether it's authentication, whether it's uh, uh, your headers, whether it's your request and response or whether it's your error codes. So it can easily troubleshoot it uh, in terms of the design phase only, right? So the conclusion, uh, I'll uh, go a little really fast over here. It's like a, we are talking about the fail fast for uh, to enable the more collaboration, automated verification and validations of design. So this even, uh, uh, it's not about the API part. We can uh, enable these things at other functional as the non-functional areas also for automated automated verification and validations of your designs, whether it's architecture designs, whether it's, uh, I would say API designs, whether it's a functional design, right? And then uh, there will be like a blameless culture uh, adoption for the end-to-end -end design process. As I mentioned, I, I give the example like four systems, A, B, C, D, but in the real world, there could be a multiple system like uh, A to Z or A to N, where we need to understand holistically what is the end-to-end -end data is flowing and how it is getting floated. So what is the design principles over there? So if we can uh, think from those uh, that perspective, the consumer and producer uh, terminology could help Help you in that case, and the design, the whatever the pipeline I showed you, it can at least help you to start thinking. Okay, how do we uh, think holistically in terms of the design verification part and the collaboration way, right? So with that, uh, I'm closing my session. So I hope it is uh, useful, and if if something is really uh, you want to understand, you can contact me always. Uh, till the time, yeah. See you and goodbye. Dheeraj, over to you. Thanks a lot, Uchit, uh, for a very insightful session. And in fact, uh, uh, we have finished the session quite early. So that means we can also dive a bit deeper on some of the aspects of the presentation which you have shared. Sure. So, yeah. So as part of the, uh, the overall session, I think uh, what is so interesting about APIs is that they have to be both understandable by humans and machines at the same time. And yes. you also shared about the team collaboration and also the cross-team co collaboration between uh, different uh, teams within the organizations, both internally as well as externally. So I think yes. this means that, they, uh, that the, the API should be intuitive, user-friendly, just like you mentioned about making it as simple as possible. But at the same time, also formal and strict. So I think this also presents the challenging task uh, to the developer team to make their API a uh, joy to use and well engineered, as this will determine its uh, popularity with other developers as well. So from that perspective, uh, uh, if any of the uh, the lessons or more of the success factors which you have come across, which you would like to share with the audience from your perspective, I think would be really helpful for the audience. Sure. In terms of the collaboration, actually, the application designer team and application development teams, mostly I have seen that they are working in a silos. So application design teams, they de uh, design the contracts and then they will pass it to the developers to work it out, right? But if we, if the both teams can come together, I would say the both parties can come together and form the contract. It will be easy for the developers to take it forward in terms of the development part. And same goes for the tester also, because testers has to understand what kind of a testing I have to do, whether it's a functional testing or whether it's just an integration testing, right? So if the three parties work together to form a contract and then push it to the common uh, centralized place where each party can 
take it as a source of truth and then work it uh, in their own ground that will be beneficial for all the teams yeah absolutely and thanks for answering that so also what i understand uh, from uh, your presentation while you were talking about the interface design you mentioned about starting small uh, collecting feedback uh, iterating it as much as possible as soon as possible uh, designing with change in mind also keeping it simple uh, thinking in the form of uh, use cases and why naming is so important while doing it and then also following the convention of various chosen api technology as well but one thing which i would like to understand a bit more is uh, why we need to prefer stateless over stateful uh, so for example keeping communication to your api stateless makes it easier to reason about so why do you think uh, uh, from the team perspective preferring stateless over stateful will be really crucial in the interface design sure it depends on uh, totally totally on the use case right let's for example if if you want to go with really lightweight uh, if you really want to go ahead with like your have a session management or your state management uh, fundamentals are clear with you and if you have a capability in that case first of all like to manage the states first of all right to outside of the designs it would be good to have a stateless principles over here but let's say for example your application cannot uh, sustain without the states or your uh, behavior of the application require those particular states in that case you have to take the i would say form engineering decision like should i include the state within my design or should i just move it, it to other uh, like other way to manage the states and just i will focus on my business logic where my application with a lightweight i can deploy anywhere anytime and my applications are independent over their application control components are indi independent in that case yeah we need to do the cautious engineering decision over there great thank you so much uh, uchit for answering that and i think you have already mentioned that why document 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 is so crucial because yeah. document <laughs> <laughs> every class resource function and endpoint that the users have to interact with uh, for operations it must be apparent what is the preconditions and post conditions are and whenever it has any side effects because i think preconditions uh, which you also touched upon are the input constraints of a, a function and post conditions are the output expectations uh, because for restful apis Uh, is is the stp method uh, are an example of expected side effects so uh, get must not change the state post usually creates new resources uh, put is for updating and must be item potent and that's why like you have mentioned document 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 is really very necessary so once again uchit really appreciate the session which you have delivered i'm sure audience have a lot of questions which they might drop you later on but from our side uh, really appreciate the time and the session which you delivered and hope to see you once again in the next edition of abi days live as well thank you so much absolutely thank you thank you dheeraj thank you